I just want to read and share just a little bit out of my heart this morning. Genesis, the third chapter. And of course, it says, Now the serpent was more cunning than all the beasts of the field which the Lord had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of the tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree in the midst of the garden. God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, you shall surely not die, for God knows the day that you will eat. Your eyes will be opened. You will be like God, and you will know good and evil. And so the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable of making one wise. And she took its fruit, and she ate, and she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. And then the eyes of both of them were opened. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made for themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. And then the Lord God called them, called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? And so he said, I heard your voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? And the man said, the woman who you gave me has given this to me, and I ate. And the Lord said to the woman, what is this that you've done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me, and I ate. Lord, I just ask this morning, at this special time, Lord, with us together, Lord God, that you would always help us to focus, see what you see, bring us back to center, Let our priorities be first born of you. And Lord, we give you the praise right now. We exalt you in this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, I go back to that story, which is history. And, you know, the Bible tells us a lot. In fact, it says in the book of John that the things that we have in this Bible are just a scratch so that we would believe. I want to read between the lines sometimes, and we won't know until we get to heaven. But to think about Adam having an encounter, walking in the cool of the day, what did they do? What was that like to be in the presence of majestic God all that time? Face to face. Talking with God, being an immortal, no worry, no fear, total provision, acceptance, protection, love. The things, that were, the things we struggle with were completely off of his radar, entirely. And the serpent comes in and we know that it was all about being in God's presence before that. Adam was so presence sensitive that he didn't even recognize certain things about himself, nakedness or anything like that. So secure in his identity. The serpent deceived him. And they went from being completely consumed with the image of God to being completely consumed with their own self-image. So it went from scriptural and spiritual and presence-oriented to soulish, just like that. And selfish. And it goes from being about God to all of a sudden Adam saying, I heard a voice. I was naked. I hid myself. I was afraid. And so it went from being all about God to all about himself. And I want to talk just a little bit, just a couple minutes this morning, about something that we all struggle with, and it's about selfishness. I'd say this, tattoo this on the fleshly tablet of your heart. If I am really struggling with sorrow and struggles over and over again, sometimes it's just the world we live in. Sometimes there's a right to grieve. Sometimes there's a right to mourn. Sometimes, you know, there's a right to get frustrated and not let it become sin. But I believe this, that selfishness is the source of the majority of our sorrow. Just being selfish, being soulish. And if you go back to 
in Isaiah, the 14th chapter, the fall, we, we, we saw the fall of Adam. Look at the fall of Lucifer. Lucifer, son of the morning, it says, how have you fallen? How was it that pride was found in you? You know what pride is? So sometimes we take pride as a good thing. Pride is being self-sufficient. I'm going to tell you what, nobody's self-sufficient. I used to pride myself in that I was self-sustainable, self-sufficient. I lived in a cabin for 10 years, totally off the grid, and I thought that I had done all that myself. The fact of the matter is, I was still drinking his water. I was still breathing his air. I was still grounded to his planet. And I was still utilizing the resources that somebody had manufactured for me. So I had to come to the conclusion at my born again experience that I own nothing and I control nothing and I brought nothing into this world and that it's not about me. It's not about me. This is the day after 9-11. And as we look back to what happened then, the greatness of America was the selflessness of the response to the terrorist act that happened. I heard the story of a, a guy who was a captain or a leader uh, with the fire department that was running up, getting people out, and they, they pushed up past the 20th floor, the 30th floor, and realized that the building was about to collapse. And so he looks at his men and he tells them, get out. But he didn't. Because there was a guy in a wheelchair that could not make it down the stairs. So rather than him leave, he stood with that guy and died with him so he wouldn't have to be alone. I want to live a selfless life because that's the quality of life. That's the life that really matters. I have a friend by the name of Albert Paxu. He's come here. He hasn't been to church here, but he's come and visited me in a... Uh, He's from Australia and China, so he goes back and forth. He's got a couple places, and he come and hang out. He was scheduled. He had his ticket to be on the second flight that hit the Twin Towers, that hit the second, that hit the second tower, and he missed his flight. I mean, you know, it's every September 11, he's got two little girls. Every September 11, he's thanking Jesus, and, and he's also saying, why me? How many of us all have been spared of some things? There's, there's things that God has saved me from I don't even know about. I could have been gone so many times, and the fact that I'm still here taking up space and sucking air means that God has intended for me not just to live for me, but to live for Him. Selfishness is hard. I believe this. Self-esteem is good. The Bible says, do not think more highly of yourself than you ought. Right? Don't think more highly. Think highly of yourself. But don't think more highly of yourself than the other person that's made in God's image, maybe. We're not talking behavior. We're talking value. Because everybody's infinitely valuable to the Lord. And so self-image, sometimes, sometimes I want to make myself something that God didn't call me to be. So I've got to take that pride out of my heart. And I've got to say, Lord, I don't want to be selfish. I don't want to be sold. I mean, there's something called self-defense. And I'm not talking about karate or the right to bear arms. I'm talking about when people get defensive all the time, easily offended. I see, I've, I've done so many weddings through the years. And it never ceases to amaze me how many mother-in-laws and bridesmaids ruin the wedding. Because somehow in the midst of this special day for this bride, they make it about them. And not about the event, not about the honor. It, it's all about them in that moment. And I say, Lord, please, Lord, it's got to be about you and it's got to be about them. That's the acronym of joy. Jesus first, other second, and me third. I don't want to be so consumed with myself because then when I get so consumed with myself, what happens is, is the blessings, like I said before, they, be, they become an idol. I, we have gone for years now on missions trips to different places. And it never, how I many know, uh, uh, 
how you perceive something. Like, I could be sitting by somebody, somebody could be sitting by me. We have the exact same encounter or the exact same thing happen to us and see it two completely different ways. And so all of a sudden, people are going on missions trips and it's wonderful. And, and the majority, the vast majority of times, our teams come back just full of God and full of awe about what the Lord has done. Thousands of people saved, supernatural healings happen. But there's been a few times where people came back and uh, I said, how was the missions trip? Because I'm thinking souls, I'm thinking God, I'm thinking glory, I'm thinking the Great Commission. And they're like, well, the food stunk. It was so hot. Yeah, it's hot. It's the jungle. What did you think you signed up for? The rice was too spicy. You're in Thailand. Everything's spicy. <laughs> Sanctify it. You know, do it. Go on a fast. Or, or this is one of the good ones. Oh, yeah, I've, 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 I've experienced something like that before. It's all about them. Remember one time we had... a. Uh, crew come back from a missions trip and they stood up and we put them up there and we're like tell us about what happened and they all just took five minutes or so which sounds, seemed like an eternity and said what a fun time they had I'm just looking at Chip and I'm like I've had enough of this tell us what Jesus did don't tell us about how fun because at that moment it wasn't about him it was about you and it's not about us. The Bible says that we're called to be living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. Man, that's our reasonable service. That's the least we can do. So I can't promote myself. Self-promotion is something as well. When somebody comes and they give you uh, the litany of things that they do and the things that they're qualified for, and that's a red flag to me. When they give me all their qualifications up front, I'm like, I'm like let, let me get, know those that labor among you. You might have a great gift, but your character cannot handle it because at the end of the day, if you don't get your way, you're going to take your ball and you're going to go home because it's about your gift. It's about your ministry. It's not about him. It is quiet in this Presbyterian church this morning. And i got to baptize myself in this mentality all the time. Why do I do what I do? Am I doing it for the Lord or am I doing it for self? The Bible says that let this spirit be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. How many? I want that spirit. I want that attitude. Let this spirit be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians, the second chapter. This is one of my favorite scriptures, but it is one of the tough scriptures as well because I want to be like Jesus. And if I want to be like Jesus, I got to have the mindset of Jesus. If I'm going to have the mindset of Jesus. I'm going to think differently about certain things. And it says, let this mindset be in you that was also in Jesus, who being God and didn't count it robbery to be equal with God did not promote himself, but subjugated himself to the will of the Father. And it said he made himself, made himself. That is intent. He intentionally made himself of no reputation. Intentionally. Because to Jesus, it wasn't about him. It was about the one that sent him. Jesus never promoted himself. Did you, did you hear? He... That's the son of God. I'm, I'm, if I had some of those qualifications, I might be putting up a flyer and having a crusade, right? I mean, that's what we do. And I'm not saying that that's wrong, but I'm saying look at the nature of Christ. Who being equal with God, didn't think a robbery to be equal with God, made himself of no reputation, humbled himself, born of a Jew, a despised race at that time, humbled himself, came in the form of a servant, yielded himself to death, even the death of a despicable criminal. Therefore God hath highly exalted him, it says, and given him that has a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee would bow. Every day. He, in the process of him not promoting self, God was promoting him the whole way. There was this trajectory in the spirit, and I think, Man, there were a whole lot of things that Jesus did that proves his humanity, not just his deity. And the Last Supper, the garden, 
Here he is, he's about to die. The guys are still arguing about who's going to be the greatest. They're still looking at themselves. What, what is it going to do for me? How is it going to promote me? How is this going to make me look? Jesus grabs a cup in the garden. And he says, Lord, if it uh, be your will, take this cup from me. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. There, I, I would have been trying to figure out, like Jesus, a million different ways where humanity could be redeemed and restored and regenerated and me not have to do that. But he realized it wasn't about him. The first, one of the laws of first mention in discipleship is, we always say, follow me. No. The law of first mention in discipleship is not follow me. It is deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. Deny yourself. That means I've got to train my mind and God's got to do something in my heart where I'm putting others first and I'm putting him first in my life. And this is where I'm at today. I'm going to wake up there tomorrow because, you know, uh, the problem with living sacrifices is they just keep trying to climb off the altar all the time. <laughs> That's what they say. <laughs> The Apostle Paul said, uh, oh, yeah, I died yesterday. I'm going to have to die today. Oh, yeah, and tomorrow I, I die daily, is what he said. I, 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 I die daily. Every day I wake up and I say, okay, am I going to do what's best for me or am I going to do what's best for him? 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, talks about it. And it says, love is not about itself. It's about others. Love does not insist on its own way. In our society right now, uh, it, it, it is real easy for governments to control people. It's real easy. Just give them what they want. Just give them what they want, and what you're going to find out, they're going to give us what we want until it's less and less and less and less, and we wake up as slaves in a country that our forefathers bled and died for. I don't even have a message this morning. I just got a rant. I just got a rant. Beauty is vanity if it's not for his glory. Wealth is covetousness if it's not for his glory. There, you know, there is a difference between talent and anointing. There is. What's crazy is, is the giftings and callings of God are without repentance. And there are so many people that have a gift from God and they're using it for themselves and they're never satisfied. It's like when I am consumed with myself, I myself am consumed. Whenever I'm consumed with myself, it's like there's this void that's a vacuum and nothing satisfies my soul. But when I'm consumed with him, it's like if I just got a little bit, that's great. And I can abase and I can abound because at the end of the day, when I'm poor, he's my portion. When I'm abundant, I still own nothing, control nothing, possess nothing, taking nothing with me because it's about him. At the end of the day, it's about him. I say, Lord, sacrifice my selfishness. Help me to put others first. Help me to see beyond how it makes me feel versus what do you feel about this situation? I want to pray for us. I'd like an hour and a half worth of sermon. But I just feel like God wants us to surrender this morning. Say, Lord, here I am. Everything that I have. It's, it says this, that Jesus, how many believe the promises of God? You confess the promises of God. You, yeah. Jesus said it is so. 
The scriptures that blow my mind the most are when Jesus says amazing things. I mean, this is better than Publisher's Clearinghouse knocking on your door and saying you're going to get $10,000 a month for the rest of your life. Oh, and you can pick a friend after you're gone to take the rest of it, right? This is Jesus, the creator of all the universe, said this. He said, anything you ask, anything you ask, according to the will of my Father, I'll do it. Anything. That is a big confession. Anything. And then... We see the fruit of it where I've asked for things in my life and it has not come to pass. And I try and be the the attorney and say, Lord, your word says this and that. But but there's also this inconvenient scripture in James, the third chapter. It says, you have not because you ask not. And it says, you have not. So there's the rest of it. Okay, I asked. You have not because you asked amiss. You ask so that you can heap it upon your own self. So it's a prayer for selfishness. It's not a prayer for abundance of what God wants to do. And so he's like, okay, God still wants to give you. How many know God wants to give you more than you can possibly contain, more than you can receive, but he wants it with a sanctified heart. I was praying this morning and I prayed the David prayer. Lord, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit in me. Cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. I want to have a life that's yielded. Not selfish, not soulish, but sanctified to him. Can you cast the, can, can, can you cast the selfish spirit out of somebody? <laughs> Well, if it's a demon, maybe you can. If it's demonic, if you let it in to the degree that it's a demon, we'll cast that thing out. But this comes for the renewing of our mind. And every day I wake up and I say, okay, Lord, what do you want from me? How can I serve a higher purpose? Moses had it pretty good. Moses was a prince raised in Pharaoh's house. And it said that he forsook the pleasure, the self-pleasure of sin for a season that he might serve the Lord with a million unhappy campers for the next 80 years at that time. He was 40 when he had that encounter. I want us to stand to our feet this morning if we could. You know that sometimes God has a way of making sure it's not about us because he disqualifies us from the very thing that we think we can do. It's like like the Apostle Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. God should have never, ever picked him to be the apostle for the Gentiles. You know why? Because he really wasn't a Gentile and he was astute in Jewish tradition. So he picks somebody that has absolutely no qualifications in the natural to go and minister to the people that he's least qualified for and not the people he's most qualified for. And then he picks rough Peter to go minister to the Jews, which is he's the least qualified to do that, but God qualifies him in doing that the most. God flips, as Jonathan would say, a switch on a lot of these things. Jeremiah was uh, too young. Gideon was of the smallest tribe and the youngest of his family, no qualification. So sometimes, so that we don't make it about us, God disqualifies us from the very beginning so that we've got to depend on him for every step along the way. I want to pray for us this morning, Lord. In this house, at this time, this morning, I want to repent of selfishness. Father, I don't want my world to be focused on me all the time. Like Adam, when I'm so focused on me all the time, Lord God, I'm easily offended. I'm always comparing with other people, Lord God. 
Sometimes when I'm selfish, it makes me proud and I say, thank God I'm not like them. Sometimes when I'm selfish, Lord God, it makes me insecure because I'm not like them. It's the flip side of pride, Lord God. Because I'm looking at myself and I don't have my eyes on you like I should. So Lord, I just ask right now that you would renew our minds. That you would take away the pride that comes from selfishness, Lord God. And that every morning we would wake up and... Oh, there's been times, listen. Has anybody ever walked out of a restaurant, had the perfect opportunity to witness to somebody and missed it? (laughs) You get a mile down the road, you're just kicking yourself and you're like, how did I miss that opportunity to share Jesus with that person? And it's because my mind was on lattes. My mind was on the next thing and I was, my mind was on me. And so Lord, help us to see what you see. Help us to look up our eyes, lift up our head and see the, I see it. The field is already white under harvest, Lord God. It's, it's out there for us, Lord God. If we will put others first, if we will put your kingdom first, Lord God, we thank you that there is a blessing that says all of these things will be added to us. If we put you first and we put others first, Lord God, you'll supply all of our needs. And so, Lord, we not only repent of these mindsets that hit all of us of selfishness, Lord God, but we also jump into a new day with a new mind, Lord God. And Father, we thank you that you are giving us your eyes and your perspective for this new day.